Here's Brody Brazil. You know, something like this is what makes sports so fascinating. Just when everybody's got their eyes focused on the San Francisco Giants trying to figure out what free agent they might sign next for the upcoming season, oh no, Farhan Zaidi and company, they do something completely different. They pull off a trade, well, with a familiar partner, the Seattle Mariners, and they acquire Robbie Ray, one of the higher echelon lefty starters in baseball today. It's kind of a complicated situation. Robbie's got an injury he's coming off of. So do the two giant players, essentially, that they've traded away to Seattle. So we'll break down this deal. But first, let's hear from Farhan Zaidi about motivations behind striking this transaction. Is it conceivable that uh, Mitch Hanniger will not be the lone San Francisco giant outfielder who uh, is is dealt between now and uh, opening day? I mean, it's certainly possible, you know, part of the motivation um, of the deal on our, our side. I mean, the main motivation was to acquire Robbie Ray, who was a guy we had interest in when he's a free agent after the 21 season. Um, you know, and again, we think really compliments Logan Webb at the top of the rotation really well. The second piece of it was just creating some roster flexibility for us, both in terms of opportunities for younger players. Um, you know, guys like Luis Matos and Elliot Ramos and, and Wade Meckler um, in our outfield picture. Um, and then on the pitching staff, some of the guys that I mentioned and, you know, the next wave of pitching that we have. So uh, it, we kind of like the group that we have. I think we could certainly go into the season with it. Um, but, you know, one of our areas of need still is probably adding to the infield, upgrading our infield defense. And so, you know, it's always possible that there's a trade that lines up that way. But, you know, as it stands now, I think we we like our outfield group. We'd be fine going into the year with it. We could still move somebody. Frankly, we could still add somebody to that mix uh, with with Mitch, uh, you know, uh, being traded today. So um, a lot of things still on the table there. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't I, – you know, to the most direct answer to your question – I can give is that you know it doesn't mean that sort of our outfield is is set and there won't be any more on that front. All right, so Hanniger and Disclafani being sent away from the Giants, and I, I think what you're seeing there is Farhan hinting a lot at maybe this trade to get Robbie Ray to kind of clear up some roster space, and apparently the cash is very even in in contracts from San Francisco to to Seattle here, so it wasn't really about the money more about roster opportunities and getting Robbie Ray probably, hopefully, in the second half of next season. But yeah, is this move a precursor to something else? Was this deal, given Robbie's timeline and, you know, given the kind of ways this creates some roster flexibility, is this something that partially developed at this time in terms of what you see your options being the rest of the way that this creates some more flexibility for that? Or like, I guess, yeah, how does that weigh into uh, this deal coming about? Yeah, the the flexibility I, I think was key. Again, I I think long term, you know, uh, we hope Robbie's you know has a, a you know a really productive three seasons with us. I mean, obviously he's going to miss the first half this year, but you know that as an aside, that's something that as he rehabs, I think it's probably reassuring to him that we're going to be taking a long view, having him under uh, contract for. Um, a couple more years, but Tommy John, again, to your way. point, the flexibility to create opportunities for our younger players, the flexibility to potentially make other moves to backfill um, in the spots that we traded away. Um, that's definitely, you know, part of the thinking here. Again, I, I think for us, Robbie, you know, and the long-term vision of him being a tandem at the top of our rotation with Logan Webb uh, was the number one motivation but um you know some of the flexibility it creates for opportunities internally and um uh, a little bit more maneuverability in terms of other free agent moves or trade acquisitions we're looking at is certainly part of it i love the comment there about the one-two punch with logan webb at the top of the of the rotation um the thing is what i was mentioning there is that with robbie ray he's going through right now the recovery from a tommy john procedure And they've said that he'd be on a best case scenario to return, at least when he was with the Mariners, their projection was best case by the all-star break, but that was an earliest possible opportunity. So 
who knows when the Giants will get him eventually at some point in 2024. So let's break down what San Francisco gave away. Mitch Hanniger, the Bay Area native born in Mountain View, went to Archbishop Mitty High School in San Jose. And, and that's one of the reasons why I just feel like I wanted this to work for him. And for them, he didn't break into Major League Baseball with the Mariners, but but spent most of his formative years there. I got to see him up close and personal for all those seasons in the American League West. Had a really good 2017 and 18, and when he came to San Francisco, signed a three-year, $43 million deal. Technically, I think it might be two years. This is like the last official one, but then there's a player option for 2025, so technically three-year deal that's going to transfer now back over to Seattle. And how about just how interesting that part is? Not too many players play a large chunk of years with one team, go somewhere else for one season, sign a new contract, and then get traded back to where they were the entire time before that. And, And maybe there is some reason why Seattle was super comfortable trying to get him back. Uh, that's got to be a, a certain aspect of of their thought process. Obviously, he can hit. Obviously, we'll get to Seattle and how the trade breaks down for them in a second, too. But they're a team in the AL West that's basically going up against the Rangers and Astros. The A's are out of the contention in the division. The Angels now losing Otani, only having Trout. I mean, that's still a very good player to have. But who knows when the Angels will ever be. Uh, competitors again. So it's the Mariners really trying to keep up with the two Texas teams, and they wanted Hanniger back, so they got him. He only ended up playing 61 games with the Giants. It was in June. He got hit by a pitch, broke his forearm, did come back uh, late in the season, hit below 200 for that last little stretch, 20-something games, I want to say. But overall, the season average was 209. That's a career low. He hit 280, I want to say, high 280s. In 2017 and or 18, right around there. So big bat, a lot of pop. Obviously, this was not reflective of him. And again, just the season he had last year, switching to the National League, getting used to different pitching on a new team, new ballpark. Then with the the broken forearm in June, you know, that's a that's a mid early to earlier to mid season injury. It's hard to come back from that with a hand injury, swinging the bat all over again. It's just unfortunate. Um, but obviously, the Giants are moving on from somebody they brought in and signed to a pretty sizable contract, three years, $43 million. Um, And the same thing goes for Di Sclafani here. On July 23rd, his season was ended after uh, the right elbow flexor strain. He was basically done pitching at that point on, but a player who signed after the 2021 campaign, right? 100-plus wins, everything was great in San Francisco. He had an awesome season, signed a three-year, $36 million deal, which ends after this season. Career-wise for Di Sclafani, 54-56 and record. Again, a lot of those years with the Reds uh, before the Giants, a 4-2-0 ERA. In 942 innings pitched, and through nine seasons, he's now 33 years old. Um, So, look, a player that had a good 2021, maybe wasn't able to recapture that, but also another player who is dealing with an injury. Now, Hanniger came back, right? The forearm issue should be all said and done and squared away and healed. Di Sclafani has not pitched since late July of of last season. So uh, hopefully there's no setbacks or concerns there. Hopefully the offseason got rid of the the flexor strain issue that he was dealing with. But again, both players for San Francisco with injury issues last season – just like the player they traded for in Robbie Ray. By the way, cash considerations also from San Francisco to Seattle as part of this deal. Uh, But the Giants getting Robbie Ray, who was injured in his very first start of 2023. I believe his his line was three and third. Pitched a little over three innings, gave up a couple runs, but obviously it was more about injury than insult in that first start as... It turns out he required Tommy John surgery, which he got by May of last year. This is a Cy Young caliber pitcher. He won that award in the American League with the Toronto Blue Jays in 2021. He also backed it up with a really good 2022 season in Seattle. He's a workhorse. 189 uh, innings pitched in that season. I think the year prior he broke 190. So this is a starter that does exactly what you want. He's going to chew up innings. He's going to give you productive starts. Hopefully a lot of quality starts. But the real kind of hitch about all this is that his return is not projected because of the surgery. 
until All-Star break at best or the earliest. So if you're the Giants, and I think we'll get into the, the deeper details in a second, you know, the reason you're doing this is obviously not to make your team better opening day, but as Farhan said, it's to kind of play the long game here and to eventually get a one-two punch for now in your rotation before maybe you add something else. He's on a five-year, $115 million deal that goes through 2026. So that's the other part about this for the Giants. You're not just getting a player who is having their contract expire and would become a free agent in anytime soon in the near future. Yeah, this this 24 season may be the part that you kind of have to suck up to get to the years you want with him. And if this is a pitcher that they've always had their eye on, a lefty like Robbie Ray, well, you're going to get him. It's just going to take some time to actually get what you want out of him. So my takeaways from this trade are a couple things here. Number one, super hard to evaluate when there's three players and some cash and all three players are coming off pretty major injuries and setbacks from last season. The Giants are definitely parting ways with two of their prior signings in DiSclefani and Mitch Haniger, uh, players that they, the team, committed a lot you know, to in terms of years and money and opportunity. And so it is kind of a moving on from that significance. Um, there's no, There's no doubt about that. Just didn't work in these two cases. But I would also say, let's be fair to Di Sclafani and, and also to Mitch Haniger, you don't get something unless you give something up. So I do understand what Seattle is seeing in those two players. Again, Haniger, big bat, something for their lineup, something for their outfield, player they're comfortable with from before. Hopefully for him, he can get back to his ways up in the Pacific Northwest. And for Di Sclafani, quality pitcher. I mean, I don't know if he's automatically in Seattle's rotation. Might they start using him out of the bullpen? They'll find a specific spot for him, but uh, there's no question about what he can bring and contribute to a team that wants to contend like the Seattle Mariners. For the Giants, it's about those two roster spots that have now opened up into the season. Of course, you know, the first thing Farhan's going to say is that, well, some of our younger players now have opportunities, but of course, everybody's got their eyes and ears on the free agent market. Well, let's see. If now you need a big bat in your lineup, is that what you're hunting for in free agency? And for Giants fans' sake, uh, let's hope that the team is is nowhere near done with players they want to bring in on the free agent market. Robbie Ray is eventually going to be a tremendous boost to this team. And I think the words long game were used there by Farhan. That's that's probably the best approach in all of this. Don't evaluate this trade anytime soon. It was moving, it was moving some chess pieces around. It was moving some quality chess pieces around. And you eventually get Robbie Ray out of this. You move on from two contracts and deals that uh, maybe just you figure didn't work out in San Francisco or could work out in a better way. So I think the Giants made off pretty well in this. I do also think that those two roster spots might be penciled in for some of the free agent hopes that the Giants have. I definitely would think that that is part of how this deal and this opportunity was structured. But in the end, that's what you're going to get at third and king eventually. Pretty good starting pitcher. A lot of innings. Very durable. Fortunately, in 2024, uh, Tommy John is a procedural thing usually. <laughs> Knock on wood. Um, but when he comes back, hopefully he's better and stronger than ever. And the Giants sure could use that in addition to some other moves this might have set up. You made it here to the end of the video. You know I appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so I can definitely see you back here next time.